So today on Scares and Sparks, I'm going to show you the world's first, drum roll please, pop-up spring-loaded prop that doesn't suck. Blew her head off. So I'm going to be recording an in-depth view of how I made the pop-up mechanism, how you can make one, um, how you can build it, how you can do the electronics, how you can do the software, and then finally, you know, what can the thing do? Um, it's way too long for one video, so I'm splitting it into four. Okay, so... The tombstone's there just to just to hide things. If I just move the, the tombstone away, we can actually see what's underneath. First of all, Nun's head is a foam head, spray painted black. Uh, this is a mask. I've added a little bit of padding inside this head to try and make it fit a bit better. I may still add more because look, she's a bit wobbly faced. Um, and she just literally sticks on the pole the pole is a grey PVC irrigation pipe. It's about, uh, I don't know, about three feet maybe. I'll have to measure it. Now the overall frame, this one has got four pieces of hardwood that I had laying around from a kitchen install, um, held together by these plastic 3D printed top and also a 3D printed bottom. So they just slot straight into there down here and then the base gets screwed into this bigger piece of board and basically what happens is the uh, pole just slides up and down inside the groove that's left in between. Now I've got two springs, one on the front, one on the back. These are from Home Depot. You can see they're about, uh, about five inch long. The overall thing, if I push it all the way down till it hits the limit switch down here, is about 10 inches of throw. If you're probably looking at that, maybe you're thinking that's not 10 inches. That's because there's already a little bit of stuff wound around. And in fact, you can actually see there's an issue here. The cord is caught around the servo arm, it shouldn't be. We'll fix that later. So the basic idea of this thing, you know, if you just wanted to make a pop-up one um, and operate it with a latch or something, you basically got your mechanism now. You're pushing down against these springs, You'd latch it at the bottom and then have a release cord. But of course, on scares and sparks, I want to make sure we put some sparks in it, which means we're going to make some electronics drive the thing. So let's take a little look at the mechanism that's involved in doing the actual movement in this one. What you can see here is the two springs are connected through by this bolt with a couple of little spacers. So it's, it's pulling on two springs at once. You can use it with one. Obviously, it's reduced amount of force, but that may be perfectly acceptable depending on how heavy the thing is you're trying to move about. Now, down here, you've got um, a plastic plate with a servo motor in. This is a metal gear servo with a decent metal servo arm. And you can see it's moving this plastic arm here in and out of the cog. Two springs are there, which keep it basically in central position so it doesn't flop up or flop down. And then around this other side, you have another plastic piece that moves up and down. This is called a pawl, uh, P-A-W-L, and this is called the ratchet. So what happens is the servo will keep moving this arm in and out, in and out, in and out. The pawl will basically, using this return spring, keep it in position and just flop up and down, boing, boing, boing. And as it does so, the string will get wound around this little pulley that's connected to the ratchet. So step by step, the servo moves and pulls the thing down, 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 down. And eventually, listen, hits a limit switch. Micro switch here is set up as a limit switch, which tells the processor that it's reached the bottom of its travel. Once it's reached the bottom of its travel, you can just leave it there, it will just latch. You don't have to keep, keep it energized, it will just be on. Then I have a trigger 
which I've got in a little cross. This has actually got a little sensor inside, a little uh, proximity sensor, um, but I thought the cross made it kind of uh, kind of cute. It's a bit like a PIR sensor, but it uses a, a radar waveform. Once that's triggered, what happens is this arm here will move backwards out of the way of this ratchet, and then this extra servo will push that way and disconnect the pawl. Now what happens is the ratchet is free to spin, nothing holding it back, and therefore the pulley is free to spin. Let's go of its string and the, sp and the springs pull the thing up very rapidly indeed, unwinding the string, and then whatever you've got on top jumps up in the air. And as you saw from the demo earlier, you know, if it jumps up fast enough, it flies off. Now the brains behind the whole thing one of my prop controller boards based around an Arduino. Uh, we've got a, a battery pack powering it. Any 12 volt will do. Comes into the first stage, goes through a power supply. It generates a strong five volts. That's what drives the servos, the Arduino, the audio and everything else. The audio player has a, has a sound of a screaming woman on it. And it drives a speaker, which is in this little box here. Um, with the audio and the only other remaining thing is there's a switched MOSFET output for a light and I'm using one of these fairly simple white lights here just to give a little bit of white light strobing up um, uh, while it's moving you, equally you know you could put this inside this inside the mask light up the head or or do anything else with the thing there's the basic idea of how the thing works it uses a ratchet to uh, pull down the string against the tension of these springs. And then once it's at the bottom, uses an extra servo motor to disengage the ratchet and it shoots off up into the sky. In part two of the video, I'm going to actually cover building one of these things from scratch. No longer using bits of wood, but using simple PVC pipes. Find the video on the links below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and go to the next video in the series to find out more about this, how this unique prop mechanism works.